Here's how to use the Gamma feature on Cheddarflow. A lot of people overcomplicate this, but at a basic level, Gamma is just how much options dealers have to adjust their hedges as price moves. So when you hear people say options positioning is pinning the market, that's kind of how Gamma works. Now, instead of digging through formulas and a bunch of math, I'm just going to show you how Cheddarflow makes it super simple right away. So first off, you can see here these cards here on the dashboard that kind of give you an entire options landscape in plain English. You can see exactly how much positioning, for example, net gex, which we'll get into, uh, call gex, put gex, call open interest, put open interest, and total open interest on each of these tabs up here. And then you can see there's a variety of other aspects above that I'll get into in a second. But at its core, the net gex tab over here is super important because it shows you where positioning is concentrated and it can hint at directional pressure. So where price may go based on how much exposure is at each of these uh, levels over here. So you can see some of these have a bit more like 1 billion here versus a 476 million or this huge one which is a call wall and we'll get into that in a second is 3.6 billion that's huge that's a lot of exposure at this level personally i like to look at this every morning and it only takes about five to ten seconds to understand where the most positioning is just because again we can see a lot of activity at or around those levels during the session so this is one of my favorite features it's the one day expected move for the s&p 500 in this case or you could do other tickers and what you can do up here is you can change the expiration remember before we're at the all expirations up here we can change it to today uh, for the day that i'm recording this and as you can see it actually changes the amount under each tab because of the positioning change so in this case here the call wall is still 650 but there's a less uh, positioning there versus what you'd see at the all expirations because it's only pulling from today's expiration you can see also the net gamma is down from what that was before um, and as a result the call wall the put wall one day expected move are all going to be different and the reason i like this so much much is it gives us a good understanding of how high up price can go during the day. For example, the one day maximum move is 653 and then how far down it can go during the day is 645 in this case. And that doesn't mean that it only can go here and it can't go anymore. Obviously, you're going to see some more volatility in certain days, but generally speaking, the majority of the time you see price remain within both of these bounds during the day. And we know based on what I shared with you previously that these put wall and call walls uh, can provide a very very nice opportunity to either short or take a long position. So nice to see there's a convergence here of the minimum move as well as the put wall. So we know if price goes down to the 645 level intraday, there's going to be support around here. And we can take a trade based on that, especially if the net gex continues to increase during the day to a substantial amount, kind of what the call wall has right now. So as you can see as well, a couple other things, one spot price is shown here. So that's where price is trading right now. This will change during the day as well as all of these amounts of exposure will actually change during the day as well. This is an interactive dashboard, so they will change as time goes on during the day. And sometimes it might not change real time if you're on, maybe if you're like off the dashboard looking at charts or something, it won't change during the day. So all you have to do is go up to the top and then refresh your browser, and then it will change some of that. I can do that right here to see if any of that changed from there. Um, as you can see, fairly straightforward concepts that can be extrapolated no matter what expiration you use, whether it's just uh, that one day, maybe you go to the weekly, uh, whenever the week closes, which would be uh, this one over here, you can see uh, some of that exposure as well. And then of course, the largest exposure is going to be if you look at all of the expirations, and that can give us a great sense of where price can potentially be pinned or just in general, good support and resistance levels. Something else cool you can do with this between the different expirations, kind of a tip for you guys is is if you look at the all expirations, the call wall level typically is going to pull price towards it as it increases in its net gex. So for example, price was actually trading much lower in previous weeks, like in the 630s, but the call wall had been building at this 650 level, this whole number. And as it continued to build, through time, we actually saw price continue to climb towards it until now where you're looking at this video as I record it, spot price is actually right on that call wall. So it kind of worked as a self-fulfilling prophecy where we kept seeing exposure increase more and more every single day as price got closer and closer to it. And as a result, price ended up 
attaching to that uh, later on. And now it can decide where it wants to go from, from there. And this is more so of a longer term strategy versus what I just showed you over here during an intraday basis. That's maybe not going to be the case on an intraday basis. We can use something like the put wall and call wall though, to provide us with that support and resistance as well as the one day maximum move and one day minimum move compared to a longer time frame. I just showed you before on the all expiration. So kind of a, a cool tidbit there on that. And then another useful tip, you can actually go up here and click on the Cheddar AI feature and then ask it whatever question you want to see. There's a couple predetermined ones up here, but let me get ask it whatever, like something random, like what happens when a call wall breaks to the upside? And we can do that and then see how it responds afterwards. And it gives us a lot of useful uh, tips during that time. And you can see really quick uh, response over here. A great question. When a call well breaks to the upside, a few mechanics can kick in that often amplifying the move. So dealer hedging uh, flips of market makers who sold those calls are frequently short gamma near large call open interest. So as price pushes through the call while they need to buy underlying shares to stay hedged. So this can be manifest as a fast push higher. Uh, we've seen that before, kind of like a gamma squeeze dynamic, just not as extreme as something like GME, for example, but can actually happen on an intraday basis whenever you see it get breached uh, clean during the day. And then there's a couple other options over here. You can see no pun intended. And it just gives you a very robust answer to any question that you might have about that gamma. So if we didn't answer it in this video, you can ask Cheddar AI about it as well. And it gives you a very nice understanding of it. And you can see here as well, it mentions 30 to 60 minute closes as being key for each of these levels. If you close above or below on an hourly, for example, that can provide confirmation. And you can maybe see something like this up here get unlocked if that's the case. And the reason I just mentioned the 60 minute can is when I'm going to show you here how to use it on a chart. Now let's check out how it looks on the chart. You can see here from those put wall and call wall levels that I showed you guys on the dashboard, it's actually perfect in this range. We can see that put wall over here is at 635 and that was the exact low. This was the put wall at the time of September 2nd and when it did bounce off of here, this was the exact low of this range and it went all the way up to eventually gap up and then reject hard from the call wall. So the call wall has acted as a hard rejection spot now twice as you can see over here a uh, one where it had this gap and crap which is basically a gap up and then you fill the gap immediately after and then as of recently over here you could see that it did reject and then so far during pre-market today it is retaining under that level as well so you can obviously see with levels like this how useful it can be for both support as you can see over here as well as resistance and that of course will flip if price is able to hold above or below and normally you'll see the changing of positioning once it breaks through so uh, the final thing that i want to mention here is a possible trade setup with this data how can we use this data to trade i personally like to use candle confirmation so for example let's say we go back over to here and we know that 635 is the put wall that specific put wall for all expirations and we retest it like we did right here there's a potential long entry off of this i know this is retrospective because we're looking in the past just bear with me um, you can see here there's a potential entry off this 635 level and even if it decides it wants to trade maybe under a bit and go down to like 632 as long as i don't have hourly candle confirmation under that 635 level and it's able to pick up by the end of it then i will continue to hold that position because i know there's a high probability we at least see some type of a bounce intraday so for the rest of the day over here and then potentially can hold the rest of my position maybe trim at the end of the day as runners to uh, continue to go a lot higher thereafter which is exactly what we saw from over here and i can take profit my final profit at the upper end of the range at that call wall which would be at the 635 so i would have taken it at least at the open over here once it opened above i'm going to take profits over there since that level was satisfied the same can be applied to a short setup uh, we know that maybe maybe i went long off the 635 like i just mentioned and then was able to close on the gap up above well i saw it got pulled down back under as you can see from over here and then i know hey if we retest it in the future there's a potential short setup so over here would be a potential short setup since we did retest it we did not have an hourly candle above nor did we have an hourly candle over here above um, either and because of that i will continue to hold that position until it closes above that is then i know there's a higher likelihood that it will continue to trend in that desired direction so that's kind of how i like to use it from a scalping to more so of a shorter term trading perspective it also can work really well if you complement it with flow for example we saw a couple super interesting call orders hit the tape near end of day yesterday uh, so that can be a risk to 
that call wall getting broken since some of the strikes, or at least that exposure for future strikes is starting to increase now, uh, which can act as a pull effect because we're kind of seeing a pin, so to speak, at that 650 level where price is remaining around it because there's so much exposure there. But once exposure changes, we start to see some of these 655 strikes, 657 strikes start to get more exposure, then price can continue to go in that direction. So 1.7 million at that level, 1.7 million again over here for 657. Highly unusual, as you can see here on Cheddar Flow, because it's highlighted in blue. And as a result, we know there's a higher likelihood now because of prints like this, especially if they continue throughout the week, that it can break through that call wall. So you just to be more careful on the short side at that point, because it could be a potential change to the range that price has been stuck in, because you don't just stay in a range forever. Eventually it will break up or break down from that range. So you have to be very watchful of other variables, such as order flow, such as dark pools, such as any indicators that you use uh, to make sure that you're aware of when that break might happen. Regardless, that's how to use the gamma exposure feature here on Cheddar Flow. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below and we'll get back to them as quick as possible. Otherwise, see you around.